Three-dimensional MOSFET structures are very good at fighting drain-induced barrier lowering. This allows them to reduce overall leakage and allows us to have transistors where dynamic power dominates again. So, we understood drain-induced barrier lowering as an effect that happens because the gate is losing control over the channel and the drain is gaining some control over the channel and that happens basically because the drain is now uh, large, deep and close to the midpoint of the channel. Now, one way we can combat uh, drain-induced barrier lowering is by decreasing T oxide. Because if we decrease the oxide, we make the gate closer to the channel. This allows it to control the channel more properly. And uh, it increases the value of C oxide relative to CD and CDEP, and thus manages to control subthreshold conduction a bit more. But the, the, the price we pay for lowering T oxide is more tunneling current. And we care about total off current rather than about one of, one of the two uh, main leakage mechanisms. But assume for a moment that we can make the gate uh, oxide so small that it's actually like one atom thick. Not even one atom thick. Let's just think of T oxide equals zero. The gate is smack in, in control, smack in touch with the channel. Does that remove drain-induced barrier lowering? The answer is obviously not, because what the problem, again, is that the depth of the drain, xj, is now very high. And the drain is in contact with a large uh, chunk of the body of, of the transistor. And so, if this is the depletion region, the drain still has plenty of, of, of uh, space and area through which to couple to the channel. So, this large face of the drain creates a large area through which a large capacitance can exist and can cause drain-induced barrier lowering over the channel. Even if you keep the gate oxide as small as you can, even if you make it zero thickness, you're still going to have drain-induced barrier lowering. So fighting drain-induced barrier lowering by reducing the thickness of the oxide not only is counterproductive because of tunneling, it's counterproductive because it misses the whole point about drain-induced barrier lowering, which is that the drain is coupling to the channel through sneaky path due to its uh, depth. So, like the first reaction we'd we, we, one would have to this is, why not make the drain shallow? Why not create a shallow drain like this? Now, this would actually control drain-induced barrier lowering, but the problem is it would increase drain resistance, which is a devastating secondary effect probably as bad as drain-induced barrier lowering, if not more so. So what's the actual solution to uh, drain-induced barrier lowering? Like, what if we really wanted uh, to uh, get rid of it completely? The real solution to drain-induced barrier lowering is the buried gate approach. The buried gate approach would create a second gate, and this second gate would exist buried in the oxide, buried in the body, sorry, and just below the channel. This would leave a small area of body around here, and this is the body where the channel can form. Now, this buried gate is um, theoretically shorted to the control gate on top so that they both have the same potential. This allows this double gate to have total control over the channel, and the drain is now completely isolated from the channel. It has no path to it because in the middle we have the buried gate. Now, the gate can effectively turn on the channel, but more importantly, it can uh, turn it off, remove charges from it, and nobody's competing with it. The only path that the, resist that the drain has to the channel is the resistive path, which is the path we expect when we have uh, drift current flowing through the channel. The problem with the buried gate approach, it's, it's, it's really nice because it totally solves this problem. But the problem is, how would you actually manage to contact it? Like, how would you guarantee that it has the same potential as the gate? Technologically, that's impossible. We cannot create a metal wire that um, digs deep and, and contacts the uh, buried gate from the bottom. That's not going to happen. So it's a good theoretical idea, and it provides actually the basis for a lot of... of uh, 
structures that help us uh, fight Debo, but it's not a practical implementation. But have, you know, keep it in mind because this is the basis of everything that we will do. Now, one way in which you can effectively uh, combat uh, Debo and is practical is silicon on insulator. So in module seven, we talked about silicon on insulator and we said that one advantage of SOI is that it helps control leakage, but we didn't explain how. And now we can explain how it can, it can control leakage. Um, the fact is you create the transistor in a sea of insulators, right? Everything is created on an insulator. And when you have a body, it's going to be a very thin body. So it's just barely enough body to form a channel. You don't have the deep body, the deep bulk in which you create traditional transistors. So you have a very thin body with barely enough P-type silicon, if you're talking about an NMOS, to create a channel. The drain and the source are going to contact with the body in a very small area, right? And this reduces the area of the, of the drain that could have a capacitive coupling to the channel. But does this not increase the resistance of the drain? We then form a raised drain. So we raise the drain and we raise the source. We don't keep them to this thickness to prevent, the, uh, to prevent an increase in drain uh, resistance. Now, this very thin body is going to form a, a very thin depletion zone. And the depletion zone is going to be limited by the uh, thickness of the body. And this thin depletion zone is going to have only a very small area uh, through which the drain can couple to it because we have a very small contact here. And so we, we actually reduce CD significantly and we keep Seagate high. Now, this allows us to back off, back off on T-oxide, i.e. increase T-oxide a little bit because drain-induced barrier lowering is effectively removed. And so subthreshold current returns to its best case scenario. So we can back off a little bit on the thickness of the oxide, because the only reason we reduced the thickness of the oxide was to give the gate more electrostatic control over the channel. Now, nobody's fighting the gate for electrostatic control over the channel, not the body and not the drain. And so we can back off a little bit. When we back off a little bit on T-oxide, we also reduce the value of tunneling current. And so with tunneling current and subthreshold current both being reduced, we reduce total leakage. So silicon on insulator is one way we can do this. Another way we can do it, and there's no reason we can't combine both these ways, is by using thin fats and other 3D uh, MOSFET structures. So in the thin fat, we start again with a, uh, an insulating base. So this is an insulator. And then we create a fin, and this fin is of the uh, body type we want to create. So for NMOS, it will be P-type. For PMOS, it will be N-type. And we create a fin of the appro appropriate type. Um, this fin is going uh, to have a height of H and a thickness of K. Now, the second step is to grow uh, a layer of oxide on part of this fin. This oxide is going to be very thin. And specifically, the thickness of this oxide is going to be T-ox. So this is going to be T-ox. So obviously, um, this is the gate capacitance. This is the gate uh, in, uh, thin ox that we will be using to create uh, the MOSFET. Then we will coat uh, or deposit polysilicon on top of this, um, of, of this uh, oxide. And so now we have created the gate of the transistor. Right. And then we use doping, uh, we use uh, ion implantation and annealing to dope a source and a drain, and the source and the drain are created on both sides of the gate. Now, it's important to understand where the MOSFET is, because this is the finished product here. So it's important to understand where the MOSFET is. This is a, uh, either the drain or the source, and this is the source or the drain, this is the other terminal. This is the gate. And the body lies under the gate. So only under the gate would the body exist. So under the gate, we don't have doping, right? And thus, the distance here is the channel length. This is the distance between the drain and the source. And the channel will be formed along, these, along this distance. The width of the channel, on the other hand, will be the uh, perimeter of the whole fin. Because this is where the, the channel will be formed. The channel will be formed 
around the whole thing because the gate surrounds the whole thing. So what's the advantage of this? The advantage of this is that the gate now surrounds the channel on three sides. And so it has control over the channel from three sides. So if the drain wants to couple to the channel, the only way it can couple to the channel is through the bottom, which is an insulator, right? A very thick insulator. And so it's going to have a very small CD. And it's not going to be able to couple to the channel as much as it would if the gate only covered the channel on the top. So the buried gate approach would cover the channel on the top and the bottom. Here we are covering the channel from three directions with the gate, isolating everybody else from the gate, uh, from the uh, channel other than the gate. And there's only one place where people can couple the, to the channel, which is through the bottom. Um, there are alternative approaches which improve this. For example, this is the omega transistor, the omega fin transistor, in which the cross section of the fin is not um, uh, a, a thin fin as it was at the top, but rather uh, sort of an omega shape. And so the advantage again here is that the gate is surrounding a lot more of the, of the channel and the drain has less proportionately less area through which it can couple to the channel. Ultimately, if you can create a structure like this, uh, which is a, um, a tube, then that would be the ultimate control. Now, the gate is surrounding the channel on all directions, and the drain has nowhere through which it could couple to the channel. Now, this is a good idea, but the problem with it is that uh, it doesn't provide mechanical support for the transistor like the other approaches uh, do. So, fin fats, especially when combined with silicon on insulator, are so effective at reducing the impact of drain-induced barrier lowering that the amount of backing off we can do on, uh, on T-oxide and the amount of reduction we can do on tunneling will lead to an overall decrease in leakage that allows us to basically start ignoring leakage again. So um, transistors, deeply, deeply uh, scaled transistors, which use these structures, actually don't suffer from leakage as much as transistors in um, shallow submicron technologies.